Hi everybody and welcome to another piano shootout video here at Miriam Pianos. It's the battle of the Kawais. We have the KDP 70 versus the KDP 110. It's the first time we've ever matched these up for a comparison. Both deliver extremely high value for their price points. Both have uh, uh, legions of fans. So we're gonna be pointing out what the differences are so that you don't have to spend hours and hours on the forums and spec sheets trying to understand exactly why one is different than the other. If it's the first time you're visiting us, please do subscribe. We really appreciate it, as well as all those comments. We try and get to as many of those as we can. We're going to be talking about the action. We're going to be comparing the sounds. Uh, we're going to be letting you do some listening to these two. So without further ado, let's get started on these right away. So we'll start with sound as a comparison between the KDP-70, which is on my left, your right, and the KDP-110. Uh, there are some similarities, there are some big, big differences. Uh, you certainly are getting your money's worth when you upgrade to the 110 from the KDP-70 if you have the budget uh, to do so. Uh, on the KDP-70, we have a pair of 8-watt speakers compared to a pair of 20-watt speakers. Um, and I can tell you that in person, the difference in the depth of sound and the difference in the overall dynamic range uh, that that difference in wattage gives you is pretty substantial. It's not an academic difference. This really feels like uh, you have uh, just a larger, bigger, you know, sound reinforcement going on. And you can even see it in the size of the cones as well. So, uh, in terms of uh, sound, when you aren't plugging into an additional amplifier or a stereo or playing on headphones, uh, certainly the KDP-110 is going to give you that extra oomph uh, to fill up a slightly larger room or in just a normal size room, uh, you're going to get that subtlety and the depth of tone that having that extra power and that larger speaker cone is going to give you. They both have 192 notes worth of polyphony, and, and what's interesting is even though there are some uh, you know, uh, big statistical differences in the two in some other areas, the sound chip itself is one of them that it, it, it's not actually that substantially different. Uh, the uh, chip on the KDP-110 is one generation uh, more recent than what's on the KDP-70, and in a spin of complete confusion, uh, Kawhi, uh, essentially the KDP-70 has more in common with the ES-110, even though its number is 70 and not KDP-110. So uh, the um, piano sample and by and large the sound chip that's in the ES-110 is the same one that you actually find in the KDP-70. So you've got that 192 notes worth of polyphony and it actually also has 88 note key sampling on it. The big difference here is that it is not the updated SKEX 88 note sample that you find on uh, the KDP-110. So there is a difference in the fidelity and the quality of that sample, but still to get 88 note sampling on something of this price point is still fairly impressive. And you know, the difference in price is not minuscule. You are talking about something like a $200 uh, gap, in Canadian dollars, $150 approximately, I think is what, the American uh, price point difference is going to be around. It might be a little closer to the $200 uh, range. So we've got the wattage we've talked about. We've got the polyphony, which is actually evenly matched. Um, there is a difference, uh, as I said, in sort of the uh, complexity of the piano sample. And I'll just let you hear that uh, quickly right now. And over to the 110.
So maybe that gives you a, a bit of a hint of the difference in that uh, sample quality between the 70 and uh, the 110. The other major difference in tone uh, is, is simply the number of sounds that you have the option and the quality of those alternative sounds. So we'll just go through those on this KDP-70. So we've already heard the principal acoustic piano sound. That's the second one's kind of a brighter, poppier sound. Even brighter still. And then the DX. So I lied. They have exactly the same set, sample set as I was going through there. I've played both so much that I actually have the list memorized in my head. So I think that's going to be, I think, 12 in there. We've got four acoustic pianos, then EP1, then the DX. Uh, then it goes to jazz organ, church organ. Then we've got harpsichord, the strings, slow strings, and then we've got three pads as well. Um, And to my ear, the only major difference that I'm hearing in the quality of the sound between these two, so we're setting aside, uh, you know, speaker volume, just talking about the signal, uh, is really that main acoustic piano where you are getting just more nuance and more uh, kind of uh, detail, you know, around that sample and the sample itself uh, is just thicker uh, and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just a beefier uh, sample. Uh, on the KDP-110. Other than that, you really are getting an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with the rest of uh, the sound sets. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's a notable difference in how you can access those sounds, however. Uh, they have pretty much exactly the same uh, control interface when you're on the instrument. The main difference with the KDP-110 is it has Bluetooth radio and a USB port. So you can hook up Kawai control software uh, to the KDP-110 and actually select all of that stuff, both wirelessly and wired. You do not have the option to do that on the KDP-70. If you aren't using any sort of uh, external software and you don't mind um, operating from the onboard buttons, um, you're getting a heck of a good sound sample uh, for the price, really, when you, when you think about it. Uh, so we're going to throw some of those comparative specs up on the screen for you, and we will be back for a quick comparison of the action. The action on these two are very similar, but they are not the same. Just like uh, the sample set on the uh, sound processor, the KDP-110 has um, an evolved action. Uh, it's the second generation of the responsive hammer compact action that you find on this. So the KDP-70 has the same action as what is on the ES-110, which is the RHC, the, re re the, the responsive hammer compact. I don't know why that's so hard to say. Uh, and then on the KDP-110, it's the second generation, so it's the RHC-2. Main difference here, triple sensor, dual sensor. And for my fingers, it's also sounding, or feeling rather, that the cushioning on the second generation is a little uh, bit more solid, um, and the lateral motion isn't quite as uh, free as on uh, what you get on the KDP-70 uh, or the ES-110. So, there may be some preference uh, in terms of how the bottom of the key bed feels between these two. I don't think there would be any doubt that the slightly more solid construction on the second generation is going to be a positive. 
Um, but it depends on the level uh, and intensity of playing that you think you're going to be, you know, uh, putting these instruments through. Yeah, uh, so similar in their approach, which is not surprising. I mean, we're talking about the same series, just one uh, very, very slight, you know, evolutionary step. So that's the, that's the action. Both have a microtexture on the white and the black keys, uh, and both have some ability to adjust the touch curve. Uh, when you uh, are talking about differences between the two, uh, not only does this have the uh, triple sensor, but because you have the ability to hook this up to the virtual technician software, this actually gives you 10 parameters on that piano sound and the action uh, for you to edit really the piano experience. So even though out of the box, the piano experience um, may not be dramatically different. Your ability to edit and tailor the 110 to your liking uh, is quite a bit more than what you get on uh, the KDP-70. Uh, the repetition speed on both feels really good, and as I've said in a number of other videos, my guess is that you're probably looking at it somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 hours of use before you might start to get that you know, plastic key clicking sound that virtually all manufacturers happen uh, to develop after you know, a certain period of time. For most users who are likely to be uh, investing into these category, these types, of this category of digital piano, uh, you know, to me, I think that gives you, you know, 10 plus years worth of worry-free uh, use. If it's gonna be something used as a intense practice instrument, I think you're probably gonna get closer to five, six years of use before maybe you start to feel some of those keys loosen up. All depends on how many hours a day you are putting into uh, these pianos. So we're gonna throw uh, a bit more information about the action up there for you. Um, I didn't mention it, but I'll say it, neither one of these has escapement on it either. You do have to get into the RH3 action with Kawhi before you hit that escapement. So we will be back with a quick discussion about other features and connectivity. Thank you so much for being with us. We've already mentioned some of those differences, uh, one of them being that this, although it does have a MIDI output, it's the old school five pin DIN MIDI uh, output. There's no USB, there's no uh, Bluetooth connectivity uh, that's available uh, on uh, this machine. The KDP-110 does have Bluetooth, it does have the USB. So if you're thinking about using this and connecting this to uh, machines, particularly if you're thinking portable machines like a phone or an iPad, KDP-110 has a few features that you are going to want to investigate uh, and just understand a little bit more. They both come in very similar cabinets. Uh, the KDP-70 uh, comes in, uh, you know, I'm not even sure whether it's a more or a less attractive uh, case. It's just a different style. It's got sort of this uh, eggshell type uh, texture uh, to it and it comes in a satin black. It's the only color it comes in. Uh, the KDP-110 uh, comes in, a, um, I think Kawhi would probably describe it as a higher quality uh, rosewood finish that's got some natural wood grain to it and uh, a bit more uh, color. So it does look a little higher end, but from a constructional standpoint, I don't think there's much of a difference to these at all. In fact, I think the structural components on these are exactly the same. Just by looking at the profile and the measurements, I, I think they are literally uh, exactly the same. Something that's very cool is they both have that grand feel system on it with their three pedals with half pedaling. 
What is that? Is it a big deal? Well, if you are used to playing on a grand piano, or if you're going to go uh, back and forth between these two and a grand piano, it's actually pretty cool. What the grand feel, grand feel system means, man, all these tongue twisters with Kawhi labeling, uh, is, is that the uh, sustain pedal has a spring in it that's exactly the same spring tension as the sustain pedal on one of their grand pianos. And the sostenuto pedal, which has a different uh, level of, of resistance on it on a real piano, if you've ever played it, the sostenuto pedal is probably the least uh, resistant pedal of all three. It's actually lighter on this too. And then the one that's typically the heaviest, which is uh, the soft pedal, uh, because you're actually shifting the whole key bed, uh, you know, left and right, it's a little bit heavier on here too. So as your foot gets used to these different types of resistance on a real piano, this is actually simulating it. So um, something that uh, you may never have noticed if it wasn't pointed out, but it just adds a bit more to the authenticity and they both have it. So to sum up, really, what are we talking about? We've got uh, more or less in a lot of ways an ES110 in a digital cabinet with the three pedals, uh, the built-in speakers, uh, and it actually comes uh, with a bench. So 192 notes of polyphony, you've got 88 note sampling, you've got 12 or 13, 12, uh, uh, you know, patches inside and particularly with the acoustic piano, you know, quite a high quality patch. Um, but there is no ability to connect um, like uh, some of the Kawhi software to this. You can't really control this uh, with an app and it's got the old school five pin uh, MIDI on it and uh, smaller speakers. I should point out that those speakers aren't um, uh, uncharacteristically small for the category. For example, the Yamaha YDP 144, uh, which retails for uh, kind of halfway between these in terms of price, actually has the same powered speaker. So it's not that this is, is uh, like unusually small. It's really that the 40 watts that the KDP 110 has stands out as being uh, by far the largest speaker of any of the piano in its class, just bar none. Um, over on the KDP 110, what then are we getting other than those larger speakers? You're getting an update with the SKEX sampling. Uh, so it's a richer sample. Um, with the apps, you can also get a much more complex editing experience uh, for that. You've got the Bluetooth uh, MIDI so that you can use this uh, to transmit and connect um, with software and devices that are compatible uh, with that Bluetooth uh, MIDI. And you've got a slightly improved, slightly more premium uh, casing uh, on the instrument. So there is your KDP roundup comparison between the 70 and the 110. If you were considering one or both, hopefully this has helped to uh, really clarify what some of those differences are uh, and hopefully uh, one now stands out as a more obvious choice to you. So thank you so much for tuning in, for watching us here on Miriam Pianos on YouTube. My name is Stu Harrison. If it was the first time that you had a chance to tune into the channel, uh, please subscribe. We would love to pick you up as a regular viewer and of course leave us a comment. We love to hear what you think of the video. So good luck with your shopping and we will see you back for more videos shortly. Sun is right.